Hi, it's me again, uh, telling you how to move to another country. <laughs> it's uh, Anya and uh, I'm really excited to share with you my tips uh, how to approach you know, public transport in a new city where you move. And uh, it's kind of, you know, you have to think about a few things, you know, uh, prices, zones. You want to also think about different tickets you can buy. You want to think about different public transport uh, vehicles that are available. <laughs> so um, yeah, I will start maybe with general knowledge and then uh, say about London and Berlin, about Barcelona. I don't know much yet, but I can make an update in a month when I will be you know, the master of this. <laughs> when you arrive, you already chose your um, you know, apartment, uh, you move there, you like it, you want to stay there, you paid your money. So now this is the time when you should start organizing uh, the public transport that you will be using. So obviously you want to think if uh, monthly tickets are in any way uh, beneficial for you. So for example, you, you go to school five days a week, I don't know, or you go to work five or four or six days a week. So you want to like kind of uh, write down how many times you will be going, you know, one way and uh, you have to count both ways and uh, how many days in a month. And then you write the price when you would buy the sing single tickets or what charge would be, for example, on your Oyster card if you live in London. And then you want to uh, write down the price for the monthly ticket. Also what you can do, sometimes it will surprise you for the better because actually you <laughs> won't use as much public transport as you think you will. So maybe you can try for a month, write down your expenses, or if you have Oyster card, you can monitor them online, which is super useful, and then see the result, uh, you know, amount, and then you can change to monthly tickets. But what I discovered myself, um, monthly tickets for me were never beneficial. So in Berlin, I bought like four first months, I was buying monthly ticket, and it was total waste of money not worth it i wasn't i didn't realize i wasn't using you know all this um, what i invested in it think you can't and it's done it will take you five minutes and it can save you money but also like on the other hand um, it will make your life a bit easier to have this ticket so you want to consider what's the most important for you and if it's not a big cost then don't worry about it and just get a monthly ticket <laughs> It will, you know, you always have it in your pocket, you never worry and you can enter, just, you know, always go somewhere. Uh, not worry to have some spare change to buy new tickets, not worry for about anything. But it can also be a bit um, problematic if you actually don't use it even, you know, half of this. You could always invest this money somewhere else and probably if you are living in this new city, you will have a lot of things you want to do. You sometimes maybe you want to go to a club, you want to go to visit some gallery or whatever. There will be so many new things that are exciting to you and you want to enjoy the city as much as possible. So really like think about your money, that what you're spending, what's not uh, necessary. You shouldn't spend because just like logical point of view says, you know, just like save up as much as possible and you can use some of it for other things or, you know, just like keep it to have money to just feel safe. And I made another video about this, you can watch it. Yes, yeah, so you just have this cost. And uh, next thing you have to think about is zones and you can easily find it about any city you move to. You just like type like zones or whatever in the city. And for example, in London, it's very popular. It's very important. Everybody knows these things because it's um, when you use your Oyster card, you will be always uh, charged for what uh, zone you enter, where you live. Uh, it always is important to think about this. Uh, yes, yeah, so for example, in London, it's very important. I'm not sure how many zones they have, I will put it on the screen now, but I know it's a lot. <laughs> and uh, you usually would uh, use like first four is, you know, like maximum, maybe 
five, I'm not sure, I was living in the fourth one and it was quite far, although it was only half an hour on the train. So like the most popular one would be the third one, I think, because it's like middle prices for the apartments, but it's still like quick to get anywhere. And obviously the second and the first one are just like central, very expensive to live in. The expense of everything is higher. So probably if you are a student, you won't be living in the first one or the second one, maybe the third one, probably the fourth one. <laughs> in Berlin, there are only three, although A is called A and B and C. Uh, C is just for the airport, like very outside of the a city people usually don't go there like unless they have really bad um, accommodation <laughs> so you always will be buying tickets for a and b this is where everything is and probably like even far you know like for example my area spandau it was one hour from the center on you know uh, overground and uh, um, quick train <laughs> so s-bahn and uh Regiobahn uh, would take me like in, you know even 15 20 minutes so depending depending on the transport you're using so obviously uh, for example London you have to choose buses you can choose overground underground and you have also um, these other trains that are called the uh, something <laughs> and um, then you can also have like some special treat or some people actually use it to go to work it uh, transports you uh, over the river so it's really cool uh, so we have these kinds of transport and uh, the bus would always be like one pound fifty uh, you uh, touch your oyster card when you enter and uh, you uh, just do it once so we will just pay for the whole ride one pound fifty and uh, overground and underground and trains you put your oyster card when you enter and then then when you go out you also touch your oyster card when you change sometimes you can just touch it as well there are some uh, readers that you can use and this is all about uh, the time of your journey and it counts you know the zones uh, is different prices in the peak time and off peak it's a bit not easy. I will leave a PDF information that you can download because uh, it's difficult to explain in a video that's already getting a bit long. <laughs> you have uh, also underground that works the same like overground and the trains are a bit more expensive and they can take you to farther places like Greenwich for example and um, or Slough or whatever. Oyster card you can uh, get in any major station. Victoria Station I would recommend, Seven Sisters. You can get it even in stores where it says Oyster card on a window and you can also top up your card in many many places once you have it. You also should pay a five pound deposit and when you are done with your uh, traveling you can refund your card and get the money uh, back. So like to say something not maybe so appropriate, uh, you can't uh, cheat in London. I mean, <laughs> sometimes you just don't have spare change to pay for your Oyster card. I'm sorry, uh, this is a reality of life, especially for a young person. Uh, and when you don't have the spare change, you are screwed up totally. So you, you, when you travel in London, you want to always have extra money always like it's saint money that you have in your pocket you have on your card you always because you just want honestly you will just be stuck in this place there is no way to um, get on a public transport especially when you have to change a lot of many ways and you put on your phone how long you have to walk it will be like three or two hours avoid it and always uh, be prepared to like pay for your oyster card. Also in London you can have rail cards which are really cool. I think one is under 25 years old and it doesn't require uh, to be studying just you have to be under 25 and you pay once 30 pounds but you always have big discount I think it's 20% and after you know even three months or six months it's really huge difference so you always want to get your rail card uh, if you are 
staying in London for a longer period of time. Uh, when we speak about Berlin, it's very easy, straightforward. There's, you know, you have uh, the difference in between tickets for A, B and A, B, C. It's like, I don't know, like 50 cent, but uh, it's not that major. You usually will buy the ticket uh, for AB. The monthly ticket for a person who's not studying is 80 um, euros. And uh, actually what I discovered I was spending, it would be like 50, maybe 40 something euro on the tickets that are for AB. So like 280, I think it's. Uh, yeah, so you just get like, you can get many tickets, I think four tickets are nine euro, um, so you can get a few, lot of them and just like, you have to mark um, in these machines the time and the station where you start your journey and you just put it in your pocket, it's, uh, you can travel for two hours for this amount of money, so it's, it's quite a good system, although I'm very surprised they don't have, you know, Oyster card is really amazing in this way that it is very appropriate for your journey what you're actually doing it's very fair so if you're using the bus it's different money if you use the trains it's different money if you're off peak uh, or in peak hours and in berlin it's just like whatever just pay for two hours and you know you can do whatever you want so sometimes it's uh, better sometimes it's worse but I would say definitely it's cheaper and uh, to be honest like mm, there are not there are usually people checking the tickets um, between you know the very central stations like Alexanderplatz, Hauptbahnhof, Friedrichstrasse but actually um, you know there like outside of them rarely you will find people who check your tickets I don't mean it in a, you know, like a way cheat, but I'm saying if you're really in a bad situation, you kind of can, uh, it's possible. I don't encourage anybody to do it, but I'm just saying it's possible. And in London, it's very difficult. Um, obviously, people probably do it somehow, but I don't know how. Uh, I've never done it before and I couldn't and I was in sometimes bad situations, but I just had to magically, you know, make the money appear and uh, put it on the Oyster card to really go home. And uh, so it's a very strict, very good system in UK and in Berlin, it's more like whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you have uh, many machines, it's very easy to buy tickets in Berlin. They are just everywhere. Topping up your Oyster card is also quite easy in London, so don't worry about it. You can also track your oyster online, which is, uh, I encourage you to do it. You have to just like log in once. You will be able to track your journeys, which is good to track your spendings. Uh, sometimes they will give you back your traveling expenses at work or whatever. You always want to have this documentation because it's so easy. Just like you log in once, it takes you five minutes. I always say this, but it's true. You know, there are some things that seem so major, but actually they are very small little tasks that you do once and it can benefit you for many months or year or whatever, how long you're staying. And uh, yeah, so just like these are some um, tips you can use to what kind of trans public transport you can find in Berlin. It's uh, also buses, um, trains, uh, overground, which is S-Bahn. You have underground, which is U-Bahn. And you have also a quick train that is Regiobahn. And uh, yeah, so it's really cool. You can use like they all are the same cost. You have also trains that are called uh, ICE, but uh, they are like you have to have special card for them. So you only use the first few I mentioned, but they are really good. And Regiobahn is really good. I've never seen such a good uh, transportation. Like I really love Berlin for this. It's very comfortable. You have um, obviously the little monitors where it shows your journey. It shows uh, how long it will take every station, what time you arrive on your station. Uh, it shows you how long it takes, you know, for the next stop. Uh, all the stops you will um, pass. You can charge your phone, which I haven't seen in London yet. You can charge your phone or your laptop. You have tables where you can work on your computer. It's so comfortable. You can go on the upper deck 
also and uh, work there in peace and quiet it's so good i love germany for their public transport honestly and it's actually you know just price normal price for the bus you know it's normal ticket um yes yeah, so i really encourage you to uh, enjoy you know this process and don't freak out i'm sure if you just like count your money count your expense and uh, just always try to save more money I know it sounds boring, but it's actually something that will help you in all possible situations. You never know. Sometimes you have a sudden expense of 100 euros you have to pay or whatever, and you always have this money. Like, um, never overspend, you know, to be lazy and think, oh, yeah, I don't want to worry about the tickets. I will just pay, you know, like whatever, 80 euro for the monthly ticket when you don't need it. It's not smart. <laughs> And always try to save up money and uh, have it for an emergency that will occur in anybody's life. Um, yeah, so this is it. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I hope I help you in some way. It's really important for me to help you because I am now going through this all process myself again and I can, you know, relate to the struggle and to like you go into this unknown world and you're not prepared. Like you read some stuff online, but it doesn't really tell you the practical advice. You know, like it's it's just demanding process, and you can watch this video, this whatever length, and uh, you know all the information, and it's really worth it to go through these videos because I give you, you know, practical advice that you can use to have just like good, really fun experience after you, you know, plan everything and uh, yeah, just you can enjoy because that's all why I'm even, you know, like filming this <laughs> because I want you to enjoy this experience because I know you, like many young people would just think, you know, oh, this is so crazy adventure, I'm so excited, but they don't prepare well and I did this myself and it's not smart, like it will give you so much trouble, headache, bad memories, like bad experience and you will just spoil all this fun and all this excitement with just being worried and this is why I encourage everybody to make extra preparation, extra counting for money, extra counting on time for your travel because you want to really just you know avoid all this trouble and all this headache and just have pure good happy memories <laughs> so yeah thank you so much for watching i'm anna and i'm like really happy for you so good luck with everything bye